Hey everyone, today we are looking at the Vega Frontier Edition liquid cooled card and I'm going to be doing a cooling breakdown for you, talking about some of the decisions at AMD, maybe have some theories on why they made those decisions. And these photos were sent to us by a reader, thank you to the reader who sent them. We're going to break it down because we just bought the Vega Frontier Edition air cooled card and frankly that was enough money spent on graphics cards right now. So looking this thing over. We have an inlet and an outlet going into the pump block. Let's label everything first. This is the pump block. And then we'll talk about this bit in a moment, but let's just go ahead and label this as pump. So we can get this started. Pump. There's your pump block. And this part is what's mounted directly to the cold plate. So there's a copper cold plate under there. The HBM, the GPU are both under there. And if we look at the lines for the cooling, we can see that it actually hits the block first. So what we think is happening right now is it looks like the liquid comes in here. There's your inlet. And then on the other end, it'll go out. But there's an interesting twist to this. So let's just label these inlet. And then we think this is the outlet. So out. That goes down this, follow this very carefully, goes down this tube. And this is a Cooler Master Cooler, which you can actually see by looking at the tubing that this is their uh, Teflon, inner Teflon coating tubing, uh, which is the kind that if you bend it too far and kink it, it'll crack that Teflon coating and you get a lot of permeation. But up until that point, it's actually really good for resisting the effects of permeation, but it's not the rubber style that you see on, for example, an Ace Attack. So, liquid goes that direction, comes back out into this blue anodized plate. This is an aluminum plate. It covers the VRMs. And if you saw our breakdown of the air-cooled card, it's the exact same card. And that layout is the exact same. So this is the VRM right here. And then the right side of the card does nothing. It's just a blank PCB. With the air-cooled card, you needed that space for the blower fan, but you don't need it this time. So they've allocated something else to it. So the liquid goes this direction now. And at some point, it will come back out right here. And that goes back to the hex or the heat exchanger. The hex on this one is a bit different from the Fury X. I'll get to that photo in a minute. But the heat exchanger, here we go, uh, radiator is a bit different. So on the Fury X, there's a tank that extends and it's right here. And that tank contains extra liquid. The tank for the Fury X uh, theoretically gave it a bit more lifespan because you hopefully bypass some of the issues of permeation over a long period like five years by adding that additional liquid so that the pump doesn't die quite as soon from the liquid running out and permeating the tubes. It's not here on this card. Instead, uh, we'll show you where it is in a minute, but the heat exchanger is a 38 millimeter wide radiator. So that's more similar to Intel's DIY closed loop cooler, which is 38 millimeters wide as well, rather than some of the smaller stuff that you see on a lot of the 120 millimeter CPU coolers, and even a bit different from the Fury X. The fan, however, is about the same. It's very similar to a Gentle Typhoon. This is basically a Gentle Typhoon copy, except it's by Cooler Master. Uh, it looks like the same fan that's on the Fury X, and that was actually a somewhat decent fan. So that's the heat exchanger. And then you can see the top of the card over here, the tack. And then over here, getting back to this one. So the liquid flow, uh, like I said, comes in this way into the inlet. It cycles through the, the inner micro fins and the cold plate. This is just a housing. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just housing for the cabling, which is over here. And this cabling is uh, for the pump control. So it's a PWM plus some extra. So it's got four pins for PWM, and then an extra pin or two for what we think are thermal sensors, but we're not positive. This is the other header, which routes over this way, uh, and that's your fan power. You can actually see it snake up over here, and that eventually leads to the fan down one of these tubes over here. So that's what's going on there. Now the interesting bit, so the liquid comes in, goes out over here for the VRM cooling, comes back out. What we didn't talk about is this bit, and this arrow is pointed the wrong direction. But uh, this part here, if you look at it, it only has one tube going into this tank. So this is 
a what we think is a reservoir because it is an aluminum die cast tank on the right side with only one possible way of entry or exit there is not an inlet and an outlet there's only what appears to be an outlet the liquid can only go that direction why would that exist well what we think is happening is rather than doing a tank on the radiator this time it looks like what amd has done is they've used their extra space or rather i should say cooler master they've used the extra space on the pcb for a tank and what's probably happening is when there is an atmosphere drop in this part over here in the main chamber and the cooling loop when there's an atmosphere drop and a pressure drop probably just like a ballpoint pen what happens is the liquid will feed from where it can it'll feed from the higher pressure area which is going to be over here so that'll go down that tube and eventually pipe into here theoretically you would do this to help stave off the dropping pressure and the permeation of liquid into the tubes over time that's going to happen eventually uh, this housing here is actually not aluminum it's a plastic i've been told by the reader who sent this but that doesn't mean it can't be some kind of metal inside however the aluminum shell of this one will help with the uh, one resistance of permeation over time and potentially some kind of cooling benefit but we're not really positive on that either way when there's an atmo drop here we get some pressure change that forces the liquid over into the main chamber theoretically extending the lifespan of the cooler as a whole because these things don't last forever the liquid permeates eventually your pump can't pull enough liquid through and it dies so that's what we think now part of the reason we think this is because we go back to this picture you can see something interesting which is these circles over here and these if we hide this layer and look at another angle uh, they kind of look like allen keys if you really look down into them and we have a photo here but they're actually not they're just straight cylinders they're circles holes and we think this might be part of the pressure change uh, where that will allow the uh, the movement of the liquid from this tank which is a pretty fat radiate or a reservoir into the other tank over there for uh, use and lengthening the lifespan of the cooler because ultimately these things only really last like five years anyway before the liquid permeates and it starts getting beyond use so it is basically a venting for pressure if you lose water it drops the atmosphere on the inside over here and it pulls from where it can get it that's what we think that's for the chamber that has two cylindrical holes uh, is interesting because we're curious why the pump isn't over here it may just be because this was the best way to do the extra water reservoir but the pump is here so that means the pumps on the cold plate which means it's potentially in the area where is that holds a patent and cooler master and other companies for a while now have been trying to claim that the pump is not on the cold plate so that they can dodge that patent issue so we're we're interested in if there's a thermal difference having the pump here more traditionally atop the gpu and the hbm rather than here where clearly this isn't the pump because one it's not powered there is zero power going to it all of this is going to the other chamber and then two there's only one way for the liquid to flow so that's a reservoir uh, and it feeds over pretty interesting stuff now what other thing you can also see that there is some glycol on right here there's actually some glycol residue you see this kind of gross uh hardened chemical around the side that's pretty standard for liquid coolers where uh, it's a bit of a sloppy job but basically there's some glycol around the edges and that's hardened and, and become dry and so that's how we know that that's got liquid in it because the liquid contained in liquid coolers is actually a distilled water plus propylene glycol mix and you tend to do a mix that uh, allows whatever storage temperature minimum that you want negative 20 negative 40 c something like that but there's some leakage over there uh, so this gives, gives us a different angle of the card we can also look at it this way and you can see uh, kind of how big these tanks are compared to the rest of the device the base plate is a little bit different from the air-cooled car they're, they're actually making tooling two different base plates and that is just because the other one simply wouldn't fit here it's got like a die cast fin stack over here for the display out and then it has a 
circle around the shroud there so that there's a, a block for the fan to force all the air through the radiator. So that's not present on this card. Instead, we get this aluminum plate, uh, liquid plate for the VRMs. And this design is very expensive. So the design that AMD has gone with and Cooler Master has gone with here costs them a good bit more than just a traditional pump on block on core design. So they've really spent a lot of extra money on the tank and on this piping system and all this stuff rather than just doing a CLC on the GPU core and then cooling the memory with a VRM fan, for example, and doing a traditional uh, hybrid where you have the blower over here, the blower goes that direction, and then you cool the rest with the CLC on the block and on the GPU. So very interesting decision here. This explains some of why the card is $600 more than the air-cooled card. Is it worth it? Probably not. You could probably, and we did, do your own liquid cooling mod for a whole hell of a lot cheaper, uh, and the performance will be just fine. Is it going to be pretty? No. So if pretty is worth $600 for you, this is your solution. But uh, from what we've seen so far, it's just it's a very expensive, extravagant cooling solution that does not necessarily beget the uh, value of having such an extravagant solution. Uh, but there's your other view of it with a bit better color balance, and that's really all there is to this card. We pretty much, some of these things are uh, informed speculation, but this is really pretty much all there is to it. Their uh, aluminum base plate and overall design kind of looks familiar to the Radeon Pro Duo. It's not, it's a different solution. They didn't really reuse a whole lot of parts from that card. So this is somewhat new. The header on the FE air-cooled card for the pump is actually present, this header right here, except it's unoccupied. So if you look at a PCB shot that we took of the air-cooled card, there is one there. Theoretically, you could even solder one on if you really wanted to, but no real point in that. Uh, so that's present, but now we know what it's used for. PWM plus, plus probably temp sensors. The bio switch on this card, uh, from what we understand it from Ryan Shroud's tweets, defaults to, I don't think I have an angle of it, defaults to the, it's up here, right up there. That switch, bio switch, defaults to the uh, lower TDP mode. So if you buy this card, make sure you're aware of that and put it into the higher TDP mode. Otherwise you bought it for really no reason. And I think that gets us through pretty much everything. That's all my notes I have. So that is the Vega Frontier Edition liquid cooled card. As always, if you like this type of coverage, you can help us out on patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And then you can go to gamersnexus.net for the articles on the website store.gamersnexus.net for a brand new shirt design that we have. And then uh, thank you to our Patreon backers who help us out in making this content possible because really it's, it's, a, it's a big help at this point to make sure we have some extra guaranteed income so that we can pay for all of these extra videos because it takes a lot of time. This one, however, not as much as the last one. If you're interested in our version of a liquid cooled card, it's on the channel. Otherwise, subscribe for more. I will see you all next time. Hey guys, Bill Joyd here. Wait, that's not right.